paint as Yukihiro Matsumoto, <laughs> also known as Mats. Thank you for coming to RubyConf 2003. It's nice to see a bigger crowd this year. In our first year in 2001, we had only 33 or so, and last year, maybe 50. Why are we here? We are here because Ruby is good enough for many of our tasks, so we do not have to talk about that. So I'm going to talk about how Ruby sucks and how we can make it better. Ruby has these problems. For example, it's slow and inconsistent. How can we fix these? With a major version change from 1.0 to 2.0, this is the opportunity to take one big step and make changes that may not be backwards compatible, but will make Ruby better. To clarify, Ruby 2 is the next version of the Ruby language, and Write is the virtual machine for Ruby 2. The path we will take to Ruby 2 depends on being free of 1.8 maintenance. Hopefully that will be soon. Then in 1.9, we will work on the syntax changes. I do, I do not know what these changes will be yet, but there will be experiments. Once we know what the syntax will be, we can work on the implementation in Write. Write will be vaporware for a long time, unfortunately. <laughs> I am still waiting for a, a, a song she to finish Write for me. So here's the long list of some things we might experiment with for Ruby 2. For example, here is a way we could have keyword arguments. Here, A is positional, and the B argument is a keyword argument, and the order does not matter. You must use the keyword argument name, in this case B, if you specify it, but it will not, and if not, it will make some kind of error. But I've not decided what kind of error yet. <laughs> this is the new hash literal syntax that we might have. That would be equivalent to the current syntax below. Maybe we can have method hooks that will let you add code to arbitrary methods to be run before or after. Def may return an object. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> if you try to add a pre-method to a method that, that does not exist, that will throw an error. Or maybe not. <laughs> As you can see, I am undecided about many of these changes. I would like help from you in the form of Ruby change requests for a time until about March 2004. These would be proposals asking if we could change Ruby in this way or that way. RCR should contain an abstract, motivation, proposal, and rationale. They could be big changes that would not be backwards compatible. I think I will reject most of them. But thinking about how to improve Ruby by many brains is better than just one small brain. Thank you. Love. 
and stirs you inside. <laughs> when I walk down the street and look into people's eyes, I can see their excitement about learning rails. You know? I can see that they know David Hennemeyer Hansen, that they want to be him, they want his fine apparel and his ways, you know? He's rushing out in the streets to get here. And that's pretty cool. <laughs> so one of the ways that I've been messing with Ruby is with cartoons and stuff. And there's a science behind this. It's incredibly thought out. I mean, wow, foxes, you know, of all animals. These are the foxes that I use in the book I'm working on. And it's sort of reactionary work to try and do something that a technical book shouldn't do. The eyes of the foxes, round and blank. There's nothing there, right? What do you have to hold on to in a technical book, you know? What drives you to read it exactly? Is there personality there? Is there feeling? Is there humanism? Is there humanity in a technical manual? Not really. There shouldn't be. Their eyes should be blank. They should be staring. This is the one I like. You can't even see anything about him. He's always down there, down there at the bottom. And that's supposed to be sort of frustrating. I know I don't have incredible things to teach in the book. I'm not an incredible programmer or anything like that. But I figure people will keep reading to see a little bit more of the short one. Why do we 
Against the backdrop of 5,000 years of the creation of content and the control of information, it's time for your fortune. Brace yourself, because some of it is hard. Everything will change. Everything. As the generations in front of you disappear one by one, you will feel yourself taking the giant step forward in the mortality line. I know this to be your future, because it is my past. I got my first programming job in the spring of 1978. The fir first web browser, Mosaic, appeared 15 years later in June of 1993, and Ruby 0.9.5 was released on December 21st, 1995. Now, a mere 20 years later, the internet is at the center of our lives. We live inside this bubble, so it's hard to remember that the job you have today appeared as suddenly as that of a linotype operator. When photo typesetting arrived, these machines became worthless overnight. Newspapers got rid of them by throwing them out upper story windows in the parking lots and having them hauled off for scrap. So there you go. That's your future. It doesn't involve an unexpected inheritance or a tall, dark stranger. Those, unfortunately, are edge cases. This is your real fortune, the one you share in common with everyone in this room. You can think about it as being on the happy path of the app of your life. But here's the deal. In the arc of your life, these are the happy things. These are the things that you can depend on. This is the meta layer that stands above everything else. If your life really were an app, you wouldn't ignore the inevitable. You'd be writing code for this right now. <laughs> Accepting the truth of this fortune makes it clear what's important. The MVPs of the only app that matter are health happiness, and the world we leave our children. I want you to start working on this app right now. There's some low-hanging fruit. Happiness. Live as if you know you'll die. Do real things. <coughs> Tell everyone you love them today. You might consider getting a little dog. <laughs> Hell, okay, you don't have to do anything dangerous. It's a rear guard action. Believe me, I know, but go down fighting. Take breaks, get an ergonomic keyboard, stand up some while you work, get some exercise, get a bike, take walks, go to the gym. Believe me, you're gonna want your body later. There are some parts of the apps you can work on by yourself, 
but some parts are better to work on together as a community. Our community is important and your place in it matters. You can contribute to open source, you can teach it that suits you. Showing up in small ways makes a big difference. We are uniquely qualified to do things for others. We're bigger than Rails and we're bigger than Ruby. We're members of the tribe of information and our lineage is that of scribes and typesetters and linotype operators. From scrolls to codexes all the way to composing rooms, we carry the mantle of the open sourcers of information. My dad is now 80 and he happily works four days a week. Two of them at the local food bank where he mows the lawn and does the books and stocks of shelves and gets temporary loans for people whose electricity has been cut off. He tries to make sure people don't go hungry and despite his efforts, they do. If you want to help, you can pitch in literally. I love Habitat for Humanity, they build houses. I am not a bit religious, but I love this mission. We all want to belong and we want to change the world and Habitat lets you do both those things while working with dangerous power tools. <laughs> if you're not the nail banging, sheet rock hanging type, I can tell you from personal experience that Habitat's volunteer management software sucks. As a matter of fact, I'm going to make a sweeping generalization, which I'm hoping you will not tweet. <laughs> if they didn't make it, or if we didn't make it, it sucks. <laughs> All these communities need help. I am always tempted to claim a fast, wind-assisted ride as my own accomplishment, as if I am that strong and I did it all myself. But I can't forget it, that if Doppelganger and me were out on the same day, riding in the opposite direction, she would work just as hard, but accomplish far less. by dent of our own efforts, but we also have been blown here by the twin tailwinds of chance and change. Having looked at the past, we can predict the future, change. And by an accident of timing, we stand at the vortex of that change, at the intersection of information and technology. Unlike many others, we are lucky enough to have choices. And the things we choose now will create the world everyone sees next. I challenge you, choose something big. talk about friendly flying robots in Ruby. First, I want to talk a little bit about terminology. People often talk about these things as drones. I actually dislike that terminology because it brings these things to mind. So I try not to use that word. So we're going to talk instead about flying robots. But when you program a drone in Ruby, they become friendly flying robots. <laughs> when Skynet comes, wouldn't you rather it be programmed in Ruby? <laughs> so I've written this library called Argus, and we're going to use it by creating a drone object here, tell the drone to start up the background processes, tell it to take off and hover about one meter, spin right, spin left, hover and land. Just a very simple, simple program. back and forth. 
take off, go two times, swing back and forth, and land. How about that? Two successful hardware demos. <laughs> Thank you again for never forgetting to test all the fucking time. <laughs> 